you're new to the hobby of hi-fi audio, most enthusiasts will tell you that to achieve the best sounding system, component audio is the way to go. While I agree with this advice, I also acknowledge that all-in-one desktop amplifiers are getting so good, it's hard not to recommend them as a one-and-done audio solution. What's going on everyone, my name is Mexo. After seeing my topping MX3 review, the good folks at Hi-Fi Go asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing its successor, the topping MX5. Given the glowing review I gave the now discontinued MX3, I was very eager to audition the MX5, and right off the top, I can tell you it's a beast. But it has one potential drawback for some users that I'll discuss in this review. As usual, links for all the products in this video will be listed in the description below. Topping is known for making high quality audio gear, and the MX5 is no exception. This multifunction power amplifier includes a Sabre 9016 DAC, an Infineon Mirus Class D speaker amplifier, and an NFCA headphone amp, which justifies its $300 price point. The MX5 delivers 55 watts per channel at 4 ohms and 35 watts at 8 ohms, which is plenty of power for most bookshelf speakers. My Gallo acoustic micro speakers are rated at 100 watts at 8 ohms, with the sensitivity of 89 dB, and the MX5 powers them effortlessly. In the box is a user manual, USB cable to connect the amp to a PC, a remote control, an antenna for Bluetooth connectivity, a quarter inch to one eighth inch headphone adapter, a chunky boy power brick, and of course the amplifier itself. The MX5 offers numerous inputs for connecting a source, which includes USB input, Bluetooth 5.0 with support for AAC, Aptex, Aptex LL and HD for high resolution streaming, optical and coax inputs, standard unbalanced RCA inputs, and a balanced TRS input. Speaker wire connects via the five-way binding posts. This brings me to my only criticism of the MX5, and that is the lack of a dedicated subwoofer output. For most full-size bookshelf speakers, a dedicated subwoofer is not necessarily required for a high fidelity listening experience. However, in my case, using my Gallo micro speakers, a dedicated subwoofer is absolutely required. Luckily for me, my subwoofer is passive, meaning I plug my speaker wires from the amp directly into the sub for signal and power. But if you don't need the extra low end of a subwoofer, the MX-5 is an easy recommend from me. But if you do, you may want to search out other alternatives. The review unit I received from Hi-Fi Go is a matte black colorway, which is far more handsome in person than in pictures. The front fascia shares a similar design language of recent topping offerings, with its large front display and bright amber font. The volume dial offers a tactile clicking while being turned, which is quite satisfying to interact with. Pushing the volume knob will power the unit on and off. Once powered on, additional pushes to the volume dial will cycle through the input selection. Like its predecessor, the MX3, the MX5 relies on its remote control for its advanced controls, such as mute, treble and bass EQ, high and low gain settings, display brightness, and memory profile buttons. I find having two memory profiles very handy for switching between speaker and headphone listening. You can also access the advanced menu via the MX5's front interface, but this is quite cumbersome to get into. First, you need to unplug power from the unit, then hold down the volume dial and re-plug in power to the unit. From there, you'll be granted access to the menu. When auditioning the MX-5, I used the USB input to connect to my PC. For testing, I only used 16-bit or 24-bit lossless high-resolution FLAC files. For the past few months, my desktop audio solution has been comprised of an iFi Zendac 2 and an SMSL AO200 power amplifier, which has been a great pairing providing a smooth and warm sound. In comparison, I'd say the MX-5 is on the warm side of analytical meaning lots of detail in the music is very present, but it sounds much warmer and full-bodied than typical Class D amplifiers to my ears. While listening to Bubbles by Yossi Hirokawa, imaging was spot on with a decently wide soundstage. One of my favorite tracks I like to use for evaluating details and dynamics is DJ Shadow's monosyllabic, and the MX-5 did not disappoint. Percussion felt weighty and punchy, 
This track is sonically all over the place, and the MX-5 provides a very convincing performance. Marvin Gaye's What's Going On feels organic and lifelike, with great vocal presence. I found I didn't need to EQ the highs or lows, and kept my EQ at zero. Its headphone amp is equally as impressive. I'm currently using a set of Hyphenman HE400 SC headphones, and the MX-5 didn't break a sweat powering these cans. Although the 400 SEs have an impedance of 25 ohms, they have a sensitivity rating of 91 dB, meaning they need a quality amplifier to squeeze out dynamics from the planar drivers. In comparison to the headphone amp of the Zendak 2, the MX-5 is not as warm, but still provides a pleasant and satisfying experience. Sound is subjective, so I wouldn't say that one sounds better than the other, but they were different listening experiences, which makes the world of hi-fi audio equipment a fun hobby to explore. After receiving the SMSL AO200 for review, I had my heart set on going down the rabbit hole of component audio, but after listening to the topping MX-5, I'm torn. This all-in-one unit is all you need for a fantastic audio experience. It's powerful and sounds great, which makes this an easy recommend. If this review helped you out, drop me a like, and remember to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mexo14. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.